Python study explore uh, the activity of XRBP learning in the adjuvant setting. We have some activity in metastatic disease, so that's why they explore in uh, early disease. However, due to the phase two in neoadjuvant setting, they reduce the number of patients uh, in the phase three program in the adjuvant setting. I think the main conclusion is that uh, uh, there is no differences between uh, AC exabepilone and AC uh, paclitaxel. Paclitaxel uh, demonstrated more uh, toxicity, but I think uh, today they won't change any uh, the practice for, for tomorrow. The role of exabepilone today uh, seems very limited uh, in uh, triple negative breast cancer. The Beacon uh, study explores the activity of a new cytotoxic drug. In fact, it's a derivative of CPT-11. And uh, they aim to explore the activity the same way as the EMBRAS uh, study with erigulin. So they compare to treatment physician choice. And uh, this phase three study demonstrated that it was improvement in overall survival of two months. However, it was not statistically uh, significant uh, considering uh, the hypothesis from the beginning. Uh, however, in pre-specified subgroup analysis, uh, one important fact was the activity in patients who presented a brain metastasis at the inclusion, and in this subgroup, uh, the uh, new drug uh, double the median survival. So I think today it won't change any practice for, for tomorrow, uh, but perhaps we have to explore the activity of this compound in brain metastasis because there is a medical need uh, in this disease, brain metastasis, and we observe also uh, during the uh, ASCO meeting, uh, retrospective analysis of the MD Anderson uh, pointed out the fact that we need systemic treatment and patients will do better with systemic treatment uh, with brain metastasis. So perhaps in the future, the development in this, in brain metastasis in uh, advanced breast cancer. We know that triple negative breast cancer is very heterogeneous uh, disease. And for instance, with the Lehman von der Bild classification, we uh, uh, know that there's many subtypes with different prognosis and with uh, different uh, impact of the treatment. One of the subgroup uh, was the ER androgen receptor positive subgroup. And one of the other, we know that there's a patient presented with a BRAC1, BRAC2 mutation. And one presentation said that explore uh, the relation of BRAC1 mutation with PDL1 on androgen receptor positivity. And in fact, there is no correlation between BRAC1 mutation and uh, androgen receptor positivity, perhaps a, a little bit more of PDL1 expression. And what uh, the main feature is that uh, we know that uh, androgen receptor subgroup generally is doing better than uh, other uh, subgroups. Uh, generally, uh, the population is older and uh, it's associated with a PDL1 expression. This is very important because if we characterize uh, this subgroup of population, we may offer a dedicated clinical trials, as for instance, targeting the androgen receptor uh, with enzalatamide, and uh, the phase two was reported. Of course, it's a small uh, phase two. We have not so many evaluable patients, but the clinical benefit rate uh, looks interesting, considering that many patients was uh, received a lot of treatment before. And the main, perhaps, fact for me in uh, this presentation that uh, they try to identify a new assay, a signature of AR positive uh, disease, and in case uh, the signature was positive the benefit was very good for the patient. So I think for tomorrow, we will uh, have to uh, look to uh, targeting the androgen receptor, but with a characterization of the population considering this uh, signature. And perhaps to explore in the first line or second line setting, but not in third, fourth line setting, uh, where the impact may be uh, less relevant. And another fact, perhaps targeting ER on PDL1 as they are co-associated in the biology of the tree.